Why is Linux so complicated? It's a question you see countless times online, and from an outside perspective, it really seems that way. For every tiny setting that you might not find right away, if you don't know what to search for, then you are always confronted with terminal commands. But Linux and its vast amount of different desktop experiences, also called desktop environments, and a huge library of applications actually makes it a lot easier to use than you might think. And to make it a bit more interesting, we're not just going to take a look at the basic stuff, like installing a web browser. No, no, no. In today's video, I'm going to show you the Linux desktop in the year 2024 from a more advanced perspective. And trust me, you won't even need a terminal. Let's dive straight in. If you have a desktop PC and ever needed to extend its storage space with a new drive, then chances are that you are already familiar with Windows Disk Management Tool. And what can I say, except it's really powerful. You can initialize and format your disk, give it a name or even backup it as a file. Now on Linux, adding a new disk to your system, adjusting its size or accessing already existing ones without entering a password every single time can seem really hard, as you often just get some commands thrown in your face. Now the general rule of thumb on Linux is that if you want to find an application that solves a certain thing, look up the desktop environment of your system instead. It's usually in some system settings in the about section. This makes it a lot easier. For adding new disks to our system, instead of mounting them with Linux commands, we can simply use a graphical application provided by our desktop environment and most ship with a similar app by default. In here we can format our drives, encrypt them, connect them at startup and so on. Like with the Windows disk management, we can also resize the file system into separate partitions, extend them back to their origin and we can also tune their performance with caches, which depending on what you use it for can be really beneficial. Next up is of course something like the task manager. Now frankly, ever since I switched to Linux, I never had to kill an application, since unlike Windows, Linux actually respects the force quit. But if a process actually hangs for good, then you can kill it with something like the system monitor. Like with the task manager on Windows, you get some basic statistics on how your system currently performs, you get a list of open apps and a quick disk utilization overview, which is really nice. In here you can pause an application with stop, resume it with start, terminate it, which is essentially just telling the application that it should shut itself down, and then there is of course… You can also set the priority of applications if you really need some performance, or kind of advanced, also limit an application to a certain number of cores it's allowed to use. If you don't like your desktop environment's default monitor, then you can also install the Mission Center from the software store. And let's just say it resembles a certain application quite a lot. Flat Seal. If you just recently switched over to Linux, then you might have already heard or read about Flatpaks. Flatpaks are simplified, sandboxed applications that run in their own environment. This makes them highly compatible across many different Linux distributions, as well as their different versions as well. One problem that this sandbox approach however has is that it often doesn't or simply can't allow for everything. If you have several disks for example, then the application might simply not be allowed to see them. So we need to do this ourselves. And since we don't want to paste some random commands, also graphically with a program called FlatSeal. It's essentially a tool to break open the default settings of Flatpaks to allow them to talk to our system in the way that we want. For example, we can extend or even limit the amount of data that an application is allowed to see. If you want to, you can even set some settings globally and never worry about it again. Now usually you shouldn't need to use flat seal at all. However, for some devices like USB sticks, it might be necessary. Oh, and some desktop environments like KDE Plasma even support these settings without the application anyway. Right, let's talk about a few other advanced things that Linux is capable of. For example, did you know that you can turn literally any Wi-Fi capable device like a laptop into a mobile hotspot? All you need is either a cable connection to your router or a SIM card if your laptop has a slot for it. Then you can simply enable the hotspot, enter a name and password and connect to it. Kind of useful if you really need it, but the far more interesting network functionality in my opinion is the inbuilt VPN support. Now, which options are available on your system out of the box may vary. On Fedora, I can use OpenConnect to connect to various VPN providers in the business space, set up a personal WireGuard connection to my home network, or use OpenVPN, 
a solution that is also often used by online providers. Once everything is set up, you simply toggle it in the newly added quick settings and you are connected. Easy! Next up, let's talk about audio. I have seen some remarks about DTS or Dolby Surround on Linux. As on Windows, many companies just put these settings in some proprietary application to toggle on or off. Like, very annoying. Anyway, if you have an actual surround capable device, or at least one with separate channels that aren't completely simulated, as it's the case with most headphones, then you should be able to see different modes in the audio settings. If you don't see them, but your device supposedly supports it, then you can install volume control, sometimes also found under PayVu control, which should have a toggle if it is actually supported. If this does also not help, then there is also easy effects, whereas you can tune your audio with a ton of effects to get the surround sound experience. You should really check it out. And last but not least, a feature that has unfortunately become worse over the years because companies just couldn't decide on a standard. Mirroring your screen to a wireless display. You know, like a Chromecast, Fire TV stick or any Miracast capable device. My personal choice for this is the GNOME Network Displays app, which does exactly that. But like I said in the beginning, because all of these different vendors just couldn't decide on a proper standard, actual success might vary. But hey, that's more of a general technology problem. Oh yeah, and regular mirroring or multi-monitor support is of course also possible. Alright, so those were just a couple of a bit more advanced tools that don't require a command line on Linux. The key takeaway here is that you shouldn't blatantly search for how to fix this or that on Linux, but rather your specific desktop environment or distribution. Also, don't be afraid to search for applications you need with your software manager. Linux is full of graphical applications that might just not be pre-installed due to their size or actual usefulness for most. Many online tutorials tell you commands, because they are mostly universal, but so are the desktop environments. Sure, there might be one or the other thing that doesn't have a graphical way yet, but I genuinely think that this is not really a concern for most. And that is where I leave it. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel, make even better videos, then please make sure to check out our membership program, as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to fund various open source projects. I really hope that you've enjoyed today's video, so if you did, then please make sure to show it with a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you so much for watching and all that's left to say now is, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.